Yes, now next after BBT we have a new theory to explain bonding in coordination complexes that is crystal field theory. Fine. Now here are some important postures of this theory. As in VBT, metal ligand bonding is considered as a pure coordinate bond in which metal locates certain orbital and ligand donate their lone pairs into that. So the bonding is purely coordinate, that is the purely covalent bond is formed. Right. But in case of crystal field theory, crystal field theory assumes here that metal and ligand they are considered as forming ionic bond. That means here metal is considered as a positive point charge and ligand is considered as a negative point charge and the attraction between metal and ligand is purely electrostatic. So this theory do not consider metal ligand as a coordinate bond, it just consider that metal and ligand when they approach each other then the force of attraction which joins them is purely electrostatic. The ionic bond is uh, formed between metal and certain number of ligands, right? So ligand considered as a negative point charge. But sometimes uh, some confusion comes in mind that uh, what about the neutral ligand? So usually uh, for a negatively charged ligand it is uh, very well considered that it is having a negative charge so it can be considered directly as a negative point charge. But some uh, ligands are neutral just like ammonia. So for that it is said that because such ligands are uh, polar uh, having uh, uh, partial negative charge here. So because of their dipolar nature their negative end will point towards the metal fine so which will lead to attraction. For example similarly water here oxygen end will point towards uh, metal. So they can also be considered being neutral but still they can be considered as a uh, negative point charge fine. Second point as certain number of ligands will uh, uh, surround central metal ion but the arrangement of ligand because ligands are negatively charged so they keep themselves at some specific distance from each other so that the repulsion between the ligands is minimum and overall stability is given to the complex right so to reduce the repulsion ligand takes some specific positions in the space right which leads to geometry of the crystal then the major point given by this theory is this theory considered that in the absence of ligand all the 5 d orbitals of metal they are degenerate means of same energy fine but in the presence of ligand when the ligand approach slowly slowly to the metal then these energy orbital which are of same energy they split up and they form two different levels of energy fine so uh, this is the major aspect this is the basic cause of color of the complexes. This is this point is very well accepted and this very well explains the color of the complexes. So we'll see how the splitting takes place in different cases. So in case of uh, crystal field theory at plus two level, we'll talk about two cases that is the octahedral complexes and tetrahedral complexes. That is coordination number six and coordination number four. Fine. So let's explain first case in crystal field theory that is octahedral complexes so for the complexes like we have case one here cft for octahedral complexes now, crystal field theory, right? Why the name crystal comes here? Because as the attraction between metal and ligand is purely electronic, purely ionic, right? Uh, which is uh, there in the ionic crystal, so that's why in the name comes crystal field theory, fine? Now, before understanding the splitting in uh, octahedral complexes, we have to first of all understand the shapes of d orbitals fine we have five d orbitals fine now these five d orbitals have uh, electron density pointed in the different directions right there are five different uh, orientations here we have five orbitals which are dx square minus y square another is dz square then we have 
dxy dyz and dxz fine dx square y square suppose this is x axis this is y axis obviously here it is z axis which is not shown if the electron density that is the lobes are pointing towards x axis and towards y axis then electron density towards axis that is x axis and y axis then this is dx square minus y square you already know these shapes from the 11th class but i'm just refreshing them because we need to understand this then dz square is having shape like this with some electron density in this column fine so this is the electron density pattern in dz square fine clear so here we'll see these two cases are uh, parallel to each other because in these two cases the electron density of the d orbitals is along the axis along the axis x y and in one case along the z axis fine in these three cases which are parallel in these three cases we have found suppose this is x axis this is y axis then the double double shape all these are double double shapes and in these cases the electron density will not be along the axis but it will be in between the axis or better to say that this electron density of d orbitals is in x y plane they are not along the axis remember very important point the electron density is in between the axis fine here it is y z just consider this y axis this z axis so if the lobes are in between y axis and z axis that is in y z plane it is d y z fine then in the last case if the axis are x axis and z axis so lobes are in between x and z axis in x z plane so it will be dx so what is the similarity in these three cases in all these three cases the electron density is in between the axis fine so these two sets so you should remember for the coming topic very very important that metal having two d orbital which have electron density along the axis and these three set of orbital have electron density which is in between the axis fine so let's continue with the splitting in the octahedral field fine so moreover to continue with the topic we again need to understand something about the octahedral geometry octahedral is a very symmetrical geometry in case of octahedral we see because we know in case of octahedral in this particular case of ml6 six, six ligands will approach metal from the six corners of the octahedron fine so these are the six corners of the octahedron you very well know about them six corners of octahedron this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 fine now if we closely observe here we we know this is situation like this is the suppose the octahedral plane that one uh, is the one uh, bond is above and one is below one position vertex above and below which form 90 degree angle with the plane so if you consider this suppose this is your x axis of the octahedral this is x axis this is perpendicular to this this can be taken as y axis and uh, this is also perpendicular to both the axis so this can be taken as the z axis so you see all the corners see corner 2 5 corner 3 6 corner 1 for all the corners of the octahedron all the